What's up guys, today we're continuing in our semi-pro tip series with a quick tip in Ableton Live. Our goal in this series is to walk you through something you could be using in your churches today, whether that be something in the world of Photoshop uh, or Premiere Pro, Ableton Live, whatever. At our church, we've got all these little tricks we use to accomplish something on Sundays, uh, shortcuts or just generally lesser known features in software. Sometimes we'll look at something that you may already be doing at your church, but offer some alternative paths you could use to go about achieving whatever that task may be. So today we're going to look at something that I think is one of the most important tools in Ableton Live, and that is the IAC driver. Without getting too technical, this is an internal device in Macs that creates a loop for MIDI communication inside your computer. You can use the IAC driver to control settings in your Ableton sets, and I'm gonna show you a couple of very useful and universal ways you can start using the IAC driver right now. Now, before we get into these tips, we first need to make sure that IAC driver is talking to Ableton. And this requires a little bit of setup ahead of time, but once you get it set up, it's set up for good, uh, unless you change the settings again. So the first thing we need to do is open our audio MIDI setup application that you can find in your applications folder. Uh, and there you're going to find uh, the IAC driver in your MIDI studio. So click on that and it's gonna bring up this window. And the first thing we need to make sure uh, is that the, the device is online. So just hit this toggle button right there, uh, the checkbox. Uh, and secondly, you need to have at least one bus port added. So just hit that little plus button if you don't have anything there uh, and then hit apply and you're good to go. That's it for the first part of this setup. You can exit audio MIDI setup and let's get back into Ableton. So jump into your Ableton preferences here in the left-hand corner and access your link slash MIDI tab. Here, hopefully you'll see under MIDI ports, uh, the IAC driver listed as an input and an output with whatever bus you, port you created in parentheses. Then to the right of the list, you'll see three options, track, sync, uh, and remote. I'm not gonna get into too much detail here for each one of these, but basically they allow Ableton to communicate with the IAC driver in different ways. So the first thing you need to do is enable track on the IAC driver's output. What that means is we're going to be able to send MIDI information from Ableton, uh, from the Ableton track to the IAC driver. Secondly, you need to enable remote on the IAC driver's input. This is very important that you get this right. You could create a MIDI feedback loop if you enable the wrong parameters or enable both uh, track and remote on each of these settings. So track on output, remote on input. Once you've got that set up, we can exit uh, the preferences. And the next thing we need to do is set up a track to communicate with the IAC driver. Either create a, a new MIDI track, uh, which your keyboard shortcut for that uh, is Shift Command T, or you can come over here to any blank part of your Ableton set and right click and hit Insert MIDI Track, or just use an existing track uh, that you already have. So come down here to the MIDI uh, 2 section of the drop down, drop down box. And if you don't have anything down here, you come over here and hit the IO button that toggles the I, uh, inputs and outputs uh, of your tracks. Uh, so we need to set this to whatever bus port we created in the IAC driver. So in my case, that's IAC driver parentheses bus one. And that means all the MIDI notes in this track are going to be routed to my IAC driver. You don't need to mess with the channel settings here, just leave it on channel one. Uh, and that's it for the setup process as far as routing goes. Once you've set up all that in your IAC driver and your Ableton preferences, it's set up for good. You won't need to change anything. And I would recommend saving a MIDI track like this in your typical Ableton set uh, and make a template that you use weekly so that you don't need to change these IO settings every time you build a set. Now let's get into these tips. Uh, first one uh, that we're going to look at is how to create a stop track in Ableton. And it doesn't matter where you do this, whether here it's here in session view uh, or arrangement view. We typically use arrangement view more often, so uh, that's where we're gonna spend the rest of our time in this tutorial. So uh, we need to create a MIDI clip inside the MIDI track that we just created, the one that's talking to the IAC driver. Uh, and that's Command Shift M, by the way, for the shortcut of how I just created that track. Uh, maybe bring it up a little bit bigger so you can see. 
uh, and you can choose any note that you want. Uh, for me, I'm gonna use C4. Now here's the part you don't wanna miss. Uh, we need to map this note to the stop button in Ableton, meaning every time this note plays, it's going to stop playback of your Ableton set automatically. So we need to go into MIDI mapping, that's Command M, or you can hit this little MIDI button up here, and it should bring up this window over here in the top left uh, of your Ableton set, and you should see some color change as well. This is telling us everything in Ableton that can be MIDI mapped. So now let's start playback of uh, our clip. And just as it's about to hit uh, the MIDI note, you wanna click the stop button a few times uh, right as it's about to hit. And hopefully, Outro. you see this little decimal point that appeared. And that's telling us that it correctly mapped the MIDI note to that button. Now you can exit MIDI mapping, and if you go and play that clip again, once the playhead reaches this MIDI note, it will automatically stop playback uh, of your Ableton set. This is great if you're one of those people who are a start Ableton and leave it type, uh, or if you have a volunteer running Ableton, uh, or whatever. Our drummer runs Ableton for us, and obviously we don't want him to stop playing drums just to pause Ableton. A second function similar to stop tracks uh, is toggling Ableton's metronome as well. We personally like the sound of Ableton's click better than most of the click tracks that come in multi-tracks or, or loop community. Uh, so same concept, uh, you create a MIDI clip or you can just use the existing one that we've already created and choose any note that you want again. I'm going to choose, uh, let's do G3. Let me delete this stop track for right now. And do the same process again. So insert, or excuse me, enter uh, MIDI mapping, command M again, and start playback. And then same concept, once it gets closer to this uh, G3 note that we just created, I'm going to come up here and hit the metronome button a few times right as it's about to hit. So, you see that it mapped my note correctly and now the same concept's gonna happen here. I exit MIDI mapping and when I get closer to this play note, you're gonna see the metronome turn on by itself. This is great for endings of songs and you're ringing out and you don't want the click to continue to play as you're crashing out of the song uh, or the song slows down at the end and you want the click to stop so someone can signal uh, the cadence. Maybe you want a click to start with no tracks, so just your band staying together. You can use the same method to map pretty much any button uh, long as it's in the MIDI track that is sending info to the IAC driver. Maybe you want uh, certain tracks to turn on at a particular point of the song. Maybe you're wanting to engage the loop bracket at certain points of a song so that you can play the same part uh, as many times as you want before moving on. All that and more is possible using this method. We use stop tracks and metronome toggles every Sunday here at our church. And we have set up Ableton in such a way uh, that every time we create a new set, the MIDI mapping and the track IO is already saved. So I don't need to recreate this whole process each time. I use C4 uh, as a stop track and G3 as a metronome toggle every week. So I went into my Ableton preferences here in the left-hand corner to my inside my uh, file folder tab and saved an Ableton template that I uh, use every week that has every key and MIDI mapping, every track and color setting that I use each week. And I just click that save button and it asks me if I wanna overwrite uh, the default set and you hit okay and then you're good to go. Just saving the template saves me a ton of time. Highly recommend saving the template with mappings uh, and everything that you use weekly.
All right, guys, that's it for this semi-pro tip. I hope this was helpful for you. I encourage you to get creative with the IAC driver. You can do a lot of stuff with MIDI mapping that can make your Ableton set a breeze each week. We've got a ton of content coming up. We've already covered some great topics on worship and ministry philosophy in our Table Talk series. If you wanna learn the lead guitar parts of some of the most popular worship songs in the world, we've got full playthroughs of those songs, including on-screen tabs uh, and tone explanations on our channel. We've got tips for your electric players on how to set their amps, dial in overdrive or dial in delay, and a ton more stuff coming up in the future. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of it, and check us out on Instagram, at Current Worship Collective, and we'll catch y'all next time.